this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the belief reset button. I'm gonna show you how you are buying in on the game of life and how you can change the things you believe to be true in a very powerful way. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now, on this video, I'll be sharing with you that of understanding the belief reset button that you can click and start to reset some of the beliefs that you have because your beliefs are creating your reality. Whether you're aware of it or not. You may even say, no, my beliefs are creating my reality. Well, that's a belief that you may have and you may create the experience that you don't create, that your beliefs don't create your reality. But of course, that belief is reaffirming itself. So even in that not creating your reality, you are getting that same result because your beliefs do create your reality. So the reason I'm making this video is because this is something I've been realizing in my own life. There are certain things I do, whether it comes to uh, diet and nutrition with uh, counting my macros is what it's called, macronutrients. So it's like the idea is that you eat a certain amount of calories per day and then you burn those calories and then like the difference is like what you're either going to gain weight or lose weight. And while scientifically that will be true, I'm going to be sharing with you that it's actually more so a belief that we are agreeing to at a certain level. There's different layers to what I'm going to be sharing with you today. But once you become aware of these layers, it will change the whole way you see your life. I promise you that by the end of this video, you will start to look at your life in a completely new way. You can't not. It's like when you know this, you will see it in everything you do. You will notice it in everyone that speaks. You will even notice it in yourself when you are speaking. And as you become more aware, you start to take your power back. So I've said this, especially back in my earlier YouTube videos, that we don't always get in life a reflection of what we want, but we always get a reflection of who we are being. Who we are being is a combination of how we think, feel, and act. Those three things make up our vibration. And our general beliefs about reality is what we will always get more reflection of. So the patterns we have, those are the patterns that we pay attention to. And then we think thoughts that are in auto loop of that creating the same experiences. So many of us are within the autopilot mind. It's just the way it works. We'd be going between the autopilot mind. We're thinking the same similar thoughts we did the day before. We're feeling the same emotions we did the day before. We're doing the same actions we did the day before. Therefore, we're getting the same results as we did the day before. And we're within that certain belief structure. Now let me ask you a question. What are your general beliefs about reality? About how the world works? Do things come to you easily? Do you have to try really hard to make things happen? Are people nice to you? Do you feel comfortable around other people or awkward? These are all things that will influence every facet of your life when you start to see what your beliefs are. But understand this, your beliefs are a choice. They're a choice, whether you're aware of it or not. Some of these beliefs may have come from hand-me-downs. Literally, our parents or our family members or our environment growing up may have given us, may have handed these beliefs over to us. And even though we think they gave them to us and like force-fed us with it, we did agree to it at a certain level. We agreed to it, we took it in and we said, okay, this is the way reality is, this is the way I see the world. Whether that's a parent telling you that kids are meant to be seen and not heard, you could say, well, that happened to me. But at a certain level, you agreed to it. Even if it was an unconscious thing as a kid, you're like, well, I was five years old, Aaron. What did you expect me to do? I get it. But you still, at a certain level, chose it. The reason I have to say this is because when you become aware of this, you see that you chose your beliefs, whether you're aware of it or not. Because in the moment you know that you chose it is the moment that you also know that you can choose something else. Because many of the beliefs that we have are just on autopilot from our parents. I had an experience recently where I was doing some shadow work when I was in uh, Costa Rica. And I had this experience where I had this flashback of this memory of when I was five or six years old. I used to always come back from my dad's and my mom's house. They're divorced. So when I was five or six years old, I was going back and forth. Whenever I'd come home from my mom's house and go back to my dad's house, there'd be an action figure on my bed. There was an action figure almost every, there, every time we came back. And we'd ask, oh, what's the action figure for? Is just because he loved us. But one day I came home, after like a year or two of doing, uh, you know, always getting an action figure, I came home and I was five or six years old. 
And I had this flashback of me coming home and there was no action figure there. And me wondering, thinking to myself, does he still love me? Because he did it because he loved me, but he's not doing it anymore. So I was a confused five or six year old wondering why I wasn't getting that validation or why I wasn't getting that reciprocation of love. Because that's how I interpreted the world. Now I can say that happened to you. I chose that at a certain perspective with where I was at the time. Then years, years, years later up until just a couple months ago when I went through this experience, I may have been having this thread of not feeling validated because of that experience of thinking that I needed a materialistic thing to feel a certain way. So you see these beliefs can sometimes trickle in the subconscious, but I agree to it at a certain level. Now the key is being aware of what that is and starting to ask yourself the question, what is the earliest memory I have of this, of not feeling validated, of not feeling loved, of not feeling worthy, of feeling embarrassed, of feeling rejected, whatever the negative emotion is, your brain will start to find the answers for you. Now here's the thing with reality. When I was talking about the macros earlier, the macronutrients, when you are studying or looking into something and you are playing according to those rules, that will be the rule set that you live in. For example, if I play to that rule set of the macronutrients, meaning I eat a certain number of macros a day and then I burn a certain calories per day and then the difference is what I gain or lose. If I agree to that rule set and I play according to it, then it will be true for me. However, what I'm learning now is I'm still somewhat doing that because I, I acknowledge that I still somewhat believe that because it's empirical science. However, what I'm also realizing is I read a book that is called The Autobiography of a Yogi, which is a book that was written a long time ago. It was Steve Jobs' like book that he read every year the last 40 years of his life. And I read it and in it, there was a yogi that was talking that uh, the, the author was talking to and he was talking about how mind is the welder or the wielder, however you say that, of muscle. It literally holds the muscle into place. And then it made me remember, uh, I remember talking to Victor one time, my buddy Victor, we were at the gym and he was talking about how Arnold Schwarzenegger used to work out and he would literally imagine his muscles getting bigger. He wouldn't just work out and like feel a pump. He would like imagine and he would tell his muscles to grow. I thought that was very interesting considering Arnold Schwarzenegger is the best Olympia of all time or you know that's what people consider him. So what this allowed me to do is to rewire my mind around that of this whole eating process. Then there's this guy that Victor knows, his name's Ray Moore and he does these uh, these like dry fasts, these dry fasts where you don't eat or drink water for like four or five days. And in doing so, it detoxes the body and it also rewires people's minds for what is possible because most people believe that that is impossible to not eat or drink water for however many days. Maybe it's more than four days, maybe it's less, I'm not sure. However, hearing about that rewired my own belief because this dude that is running the workshops, he doesn't eat very often at all. He's a breatharian. And he is in, he's in good shape. He's not, you know, if I, I wouldn't necessarily maybe, it'd hold me back from wanting to do it if I saw someone that was doing it, but they were like really, really skinny. And I want to, and I want to still have, you know, muscle. So the idea is, well, okay, if he's able to maintain his body frame and he has like, you know, similar body frame as me, then, then it, it's kind of rewiring the way I look at it. Maybe mind is the welder of muscles. Maybe it holds it into place in a different way. Maybe our beliefs that we need to eat three meals a day and all of these calories and we need to do this and this and this is, maybe that belief is what really holds this, all this stuff into play. And according to the rule game, according to the game that you choose to play will be the results that you get. So it's like, it depends on what you agree to and what you are aware of because you don't know what you don't know. If I would have been aware of the whole of like the autobiography of Yogi and like thought that idea, I may have not been open to it. If I would have been aware that dry fasting is possible where people don't eat very much but still, there's also, there's a, a Yogi in, um, in uh, the Yogananda book, the autobiography of Yogi. There was one Yogi that was like 400 pounds that he was talking about and he said that guy did not eat at all. He would eat like once every couple months but he's like 400 pounds which makes you think how is that even possible? And he was I guess choosing that and not eating because that was kind of showing what was possible. You know, it was a guy that probably lived in a cave or something like that in, uh, in India. However, uh, 
that was that was what the 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 uh, author said. He's like, I could not figure out how he weighed 400 pounds because he does not eat. You know, um, but maybe there is something beyond that. Now, here's what I'm I'm not saying. What I'm saying is, be aware of what your beliefs are and what game you are playing. So, okay, that's just that's just nutrition. Comes to money. Well, there's a certain way you have to make money. You have to go to a, a school, get a degree. You got to go do this, then you got to work your way up and go do that. Well, that's a certain game, and it, it can work. But do you agree to it? There are other ways of going about it. You could learn how to make money online. You could learn internet marketing. You could learn all this other stuff, and that could be the game that you play. Or you could renovate it, and you could do a hybrid of both. Or you could do the whole. There's certain blueprints that are out there that you can follow, but just be aware that you are choosing to follow it. Now the thing is, is that's finances, relationships. It could be the same thing. However, what I'm saying with this is just be aware of the game you are playing. Because whatever you believe to be true will be reflected back to you. Everything in life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Even when it comes down to the biomolecular structure. There have been documented cases of this where people that had multiple personality disorder, meaning they have one personality right now, they shift to another, say their, their name is Debbie. Then Debbie shifts to a Fred. And then Fred shifts back to uh, Margaret. And then Margaret shifts back to uh, Sally. I don't know, I'm picking all these very generic names. As they shift, as that person shifts from these different personalities, Sally may have a tumor. Fred may have some other type of, may have arthritis. These different personalities, all within the same body. If you were to measure the cellular structure and you were to actually measure and take samples from that same person when they are shifting to these different personalities, one will have the tumor, Sally may have the tumor, 10 minutes later, Sally may turn back into Debbie and not have the tumor. What is reality? What if by switching from that personality with that personality, which has a pattern of how that personality thinks, feels, and acts, there is a different biomecular structure and just within a couple minutes, they shift and they simply do not have that tumor. That has been documented. Even just those personalities having different eye color. They might have one eye color shift to a different personality. Within minutes, their eye color has changed. Why is that? Could it be that beliefs create a reality? Could it be that that is showing us the power of the present moment right now and how easily you can shift if you can let go of the old way you identify yourself? The reason I share that story, that little uh, that, uh, that example is because it shows us what is possible. When we start to let go of the things that no longer serve us and the story we tell ourselves, that's even at a subconscious level because she's, she's shifting personalities, literally. So that's showing us what is possible. Now, I'm not saying we have to have some personality disorder. I'm saying that if you let go of your past, maybe it's not personality disorder. I don't want to put that into like a, a lump sum. It's just an experience. But if we can let go of our past, what we can begin to do is realize that when we let go of our past, we can then really be present to the moment. We can let go of the story we tell ourselves about how reality works, about how everything's going down. That's when our life will begin to change in a very powerful way. Now, what I'd like to ask you to do is to become aware of the beliefs you have about how reality works. And after everything you say, you can say, and so it is. And so it is, so that you can become aware that that is what you are affirming. Oh, traffic is this way every time I go to work, and so it is. The universe is saying yes to what you say. Oh, I believe it's hard to, uh, to attract this kind of person in my life. Okay, the universe says okay. So the key is being aware of what you are agreeing to. You at a certain level are agreeing to these different beliefs. And what you can decide to do is to play your own game. This is the game of life. We have chosen to play this game of life. I say it's a game because it makes it more light. It makes it more fun. When people are like, oh, this, this reality is so solid. It's so this, it's so that. It makes things hard to change. When you learn how to hack the game by being aware that your beliefs create your reality, that's when you begin to gain your power back. 
That's when you can start to agree to a new set of rules. So how do you push that button, that reset button of belief? Awareness. It's so simple, but at the same time, it is the most powerful thing that you can ever experience in your life is more awareness. If you are aware of your beliefs, you don't have to keep on living them in the same way. Because most of you, all your beliefs are on autopilot from a past experience. When I became aware of that action figure story of my beliefs, I could then choose something new. And the next time I'm in the middle of something and I don't feel validated, that little action figure will spike, will kind of like flash in my mind and I go, oh yeah, that's not what I choose. And then I'm then pushing the reset button on my beliefs. The way that you push the reset button is by taking inventory of your beliefs. Because awareness is the key. What beliefs do you have? What are your beliefs about money? What are your beliefs about relationships? What are your beliefs about health? What are your beliefs about life in general? That's the thing I really like for people to, to contemplate because many people look for the details. Well, what do, I, what do I believe about money? Well, if you have a general feeling of worthiness about life that you aren't worthy in life, even if you fix the money thing, you still got this other worthiness thing to deal with. What are your beliefs about life? You see, even the law of attraction to a certain level, even though it may be a law of the way our universe works, the amount of buy-in you have with it will determine how much you get out of it. Because if you're not even aware that you, your beliefs create your reality or that the law of attraction is real, then you will create the experience that the law of attraction is not real, which only means you are not seeing the consistent and the correlation between what you're thinking and what you're experiencing. But of course, if you say the law of attraction doesn't work and you attract experiences that prove the law of attraction doesn't work, then you are affirming that it does. And the same thing with beliefs. It's just that that's how powerful our consciousness is. It can create these little illusions that make us think this is real. And when you become aware of this energy state and you become aware of this, this is when your whole entire life begins to change. You are buying in to how reality works and you don't even know it. You've bought into how you look, how you relate to other people. You've bought into how nutrition works for you. You've bought into how money comes to you. You've bought into how relationships are. All these things are choices that you've made at a certain level that you are now becoming more aware of. And as you become more aware of it, you start to take your power back. You start to become aware that you can choose something new. You don't have to live according to the old rule plan, according to the old beliefs. You can let them go. They served you. The key to this is not resisting the beliefs. Those beliefs served you for a period of time, but now it is time to let them go. How do they serve you? They have allowed you to feel comfortable. They have allowed you to learn more about yourself. So you let them be there and you just become aware of them. It's really just as simple as awareness. Well, do I have to do this and that? You can go back into your past. You can go back and you can find out where the root is. That's very powerful. But finding the belief in general is where the power is. Now, what I have, and you'll see in the top description box below, is the most powerful meditation I've ever created. It's on completing the past, helping you to become aware of these trigger experiences. I recommend you listen to that meditation for 21 days. I think it'll absolutely change your life. Read the comments in the, uh, on the video to see what is possible for you. And it will help you to reset the past and also to feel more worthy. It will literally flush you with more of your natural vibration, your core vibration of who you are at the end. So 21 days is what I think will allow you to really be a new version of you and also push the belief reset button. Another thing I'll be doing is more live Q and A's on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram yet, you'll see it there. I do live Q and A's almost every day. I have been at least recently. Also, I do daily posts there as well that are native to YouTube. So it's actually just for Instagram. So if you want more content from me, you'll see Instagram right there. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the little notification here so that you can see the daily vids that I do. That's what YouTube does it now. So you actually have to hit the notification button to see the daily vids. Other than that, as always, peace, much love, and namaste.